Oh, they're kind of cute, and yet I don't want to trust them. Hey, what's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Keith's Fantasy Club, Iron Paw, and Rhino Horn. So here we are, and there they are. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. We'll start off with Iron Paw. There we have some nice artwork there of Iron Paw. His name is Iron Paw. Up top, heavy metal on the bottom words, things warning. Don't eat anything in this box that could be very bad for you. On this side, let Letters, numbers, words, and on the back we have a bio if you want to read it. And that's basically it for Iron Paws packaging. Next up is Rhino Horn. Here is Rhino Horn. Heavy metal warning. Uh, converts from robotic rhino to cassette and back again. Yay. Words, things, stuff. On the back again you have a bio if you want to read it. And that's basically it for... The packaging and also included are collector's cards featuring Iron Paw and Iron Paw? Question mark? Okay. <laughs> Somebody goofed there. But anyway, say my work and on the back you have tech specs. If that interests you, hooray for cards. And moving right along, here we have Iron Paw and Rhino Horn. Two more cassettes for KFC's Blaster. And these are their take on Steel Jaw and Ram Horn. And here they are in their cassette mode. They are packed in cassette mode. And you can see they come in little cases, which are quite, quite nice. Done in a transparent blue. And we'll just remove them so we can take a better look at the cassette modes here. So we'll start off with Iron Paw. You can see it looks like a cassette. It's shaped like a cassette. It works, of course. The back, <laughs> you see, all of the uh, all the beast mode bits going on there. But from this side, looks like a cassette. Why not? Same thing here with ram horn or rhino horn. Again, looks like a cassette. Works, of course. The back, you know, kind of kills the illusion. But as long as that side looks good, that is all that matters. And they slide. They slide like cassettes slide. Hooray for sliding cassettes. That's pretty much all you can do with them. And for comparison, here they are with G1, Steel Jaw and Ram Horn, because they're precious, oh so precious. And obviously these will work with KFC's blaster since it's what it's meant to go with. You can pop them both in there and voila. And if you have the fans toys Blaster, um, it'll fit. It'll fit in there actually quite comfortably. It actually fits in there better than the Fans Toys cassette does. And what about the DS Blaster? Uh, it's, it's snug. It's a little bit on the snug side, but fits also. And G1 Blaster? Yeah, sure. Why not? Dare I say why not? So that is basically it for the cassette modes. Um, they do what cassettes do. They're doing it now. But let's get down to transformation, shall we? Okay, so let's get started. And we're going to start with Iron Paw. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these legs here and flip them out to either side. Once that is done, you're going to unpeg them. There's a little post port connection right there. Just undo that and swing those legs up. These gold sections right here, you're going to just rotate down. Not on the whole hinge, but we can do that. All right. <laughs> you just want them straight out like that. And bring it out like so. Once that is done, you want to take this whole assembly now and just rock this down. And once that is done, take all this, rotate it 180. You're then going to bring the halves of his head out you can close the mouth and now you're going to take this little section right here you're going to flip this up then you're going to fold all of this down and there's a little tab slot connection right here it's not the most secure it doesn't really hold in because this rotational joint just kind of makes it pop out it's just it's just there more as a suggestion than anything else but you do that just kind of bring these legs forward get them out of the way so you can then bring this head section up and you have to kind of work around the legs here 
and then just bring the two halves together and it will all just pack together like so. You can grab the little paws there. We can pose the legs a little bit later, but there we have all of that. So now, coming to the back section here, you want to take those hind legs and just extend them out. Extend them out. And then just rotate the legs downward on this hinge. The tail, I have to tighten that screw. The tail's a little loose. I just have to tighten that little screw there. But bring the tail down. And once that is done, you're going to take this section here with the blasters and bring them all the way forward on that hinge. You have a little panel here. That will open up this little section here. We'll just rotate back to make his weapons. And second verse, just like the first. So just bring that forward, bring that back, rotate this little section up here. Kind of get that all situated. Just kind of get all those hinges working with you. Try to get everything tapped together as best you can. And so there you go. There you have Iron Paw, a.k.a. Steel Jaw, in his beast mode. And it's okay. It's okay. Not my favorite. It's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's okay. Definitely could be better. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Definitely not my favorite steel jaw that I have ever seen, but you yeah, know it is what it is. There was, the effort, the effort's there. The effort's there. It just wasn't a very good effort, but you know the effort's there. But let's get in close here, so we can take a look at that noggin. You can see the teeth there done in white, as well as the eyes. You got those weapons done in a nice gold little tail there. The booty, the iron booty, buns of steel. Again, like not horrible, but not great either. Again, I've I've had better steel jaws, but you know what? I can work with it now. Articulation wise, uh, the head can move up and down at this axis. It can also move up and down here. The mouth can open and close if we can get get open, open, open. Yeah, there we go. Roar. Roar. That was worth it. <laughs> the front legs are on a ball joint. They can do a full 360. Can move in and out. You have a hinge that allows the front leg to move forward and all the way back. The little paw is on a hinge that moves up and down. Uh, you do have waist rotation just due to the fact that this doesn't lock in at all. So you end up with, you know, some rotation there. On the hind legs can rotate forward and back. You can only go up so far because weapons then get in the way. Um, knees here can move forward and back, only back that far, but it can fold up all the way. Again, those back paws can move up and down, and the tail can wiggle waggle up and down. And for comparison, here he is with the fans toys, steel jaw. With the ocular max steel jaw, which is my personal favorite. And with G1 Steel Jaw, because he's precious, oh so precious. And next up is Rhino Horn, and to transform him, we're going to come back here, we're going to take these sections with the weapons, and just open these up on either side, like so. Once that is done, we're going to take this assembly here with the head, flip this up, and then bring he has together the little horns on a hinge just bring those forward you can bring his little ears back as well and we got that situated uh, now that that is done we're going to take his little legs here and we're going to just extend all of them out all of them out, all of them out, and that just looks like some kind of weird creature, but okay. And now we're going to take this central section here, bring it up, and then fold the two halves in. And once that is done, we're going to take this section here, and rotate it 180, and rotate it 180, 
Now this one has some legit clever engineering going on here. Now once you've done that, you're going to bring the two halves together and you have a post port connection here on either side. So make sure you line it up and plug all that in. You can see how that makes the body. Then you just bring the head down. So now we're going to take his weapons here. We're going to bring them down just halfway so we can take this section and rotate it. And then bring it down. I have to. This has gotten loose again. I, to, I gotta tighten up that little screw there. But bring that down. Do the same thing on the other side. Just bring that halfway down and then rotate it. Come on, move, move. There we go. Bring that down, and that will just tab into place right there. And once that is done, we can take these sections here. Just fan them out, and then we can bring out this little bit here. And these are going to be the halves of his tail. And bring those out, and then you just take these two halves, bring them together, and then you bring all of this down, and you have a little post that will go into little ports on either side here. Just bring that all the way down, line that up, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. And get that all situated. And there you go. There you have Rhino Horn in his beast mode. And I really like him. I really like this Ram Horn. I think they actually did a really good job here, in my opinion, anyway. I do quite dig it. I quite, quite dig it. Now let's get in close here so we can take a look. That's that noggin. Now, one thing that is kind of a detraction is like all of the <laughs> all the pins and like rivets just going through his face. That does kind of take away from the aesthetic a little bit. But yeah, no, it is what it is. But still, overall, it looks good. If we ignore <laughs> if we ignore all the piercings he has on his face, you know, it still looks quite good. Nice gold there for the weapons. Got a little tail and everything. I personally quite, quite dig this little guy. Now articulation wise, there's not too much you can do. The head can move up and down some. You can bring up the entire neck if you want to, but the head just moves down, up and down some. You position his ears, you can do that if you want to. Things you can do if you want to do it. The front legs can only move forward and back a little bit. You have that knee joint there, which moves forward and back. Little hoofs can move up and down. Hind legs, again, you don't get too much range of movement. That is pretty much it. You got the knees here, which gives you some better range of movement here. Again, little toesies can move up and down. And the tail can move up and down, and that is pretty much it. So not a whole lot posability-wise, but as far as looks go, I definitely dig them. So there you have that, and now for Comparas Hunt. Here he is with the DS Ram Horn. With the Fans Toys Ram Horn. And with G1 Ram Horn, because he's precious, oh so precious. And here we have the nice family photo with Blaster and Rewind. You can see how they all look together. So, there you go. So there you have Iron Paw and Rhino Horn. Um, now, as far as Iron Paw goes, um, not really a fan. Um, I've, I've had better Steel Jaws. This one is just, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Not great. Definitely not the best in terms of design. But Rhino Horn, I love Rhino Horn. I think they did a great job with this one. It looks good in its Rhino mode. I personally think this might be the best Ram Horn we've gotten so far. But as always, just my opinion to each their own. So there you go. Now, if you would like this or any of KFC's other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There'll be a link in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also check out the third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games. Check out Love, Peace, Paranormal. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Keith's Fantasy Club, Iron Paw and Rhino Horn. And this is M Go saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. 
Be geek, be proud, bomb in your face. Um, Blaster, you really, really, really need to keep your pets out of my quarters. Well, what'd they do? They peed. They peed everywhere. They peed on literally everything I own. Now, seriously? They peed in places I don't even know how they reached, and honestly, that's kind of impressive. But still disgusting. Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. They're peeing on me right now. Oh, is that what that smell is?